Super Mario Maker 2 came out last week. And so we're gonna look at some tips to make levels in Super Mario Maker 2. Now there are very different kinds of levels in Super Mario Maker. There are some crazy wacky death trap levels and there are some crazy novelty levels. But in this video, we're gonna look at some tips that have been put forward by someone who has written a level design book so that your levels will feel like they're levels straight out of an actual Mario game. Chris Totten is an associate professor at Kent State and an award-winning game designer. I've thrown his Twitter profile up on the screen so you can see what he says about himself. Chris wrote a book called An Architectural Approach to Level Design and is a relatively academic text. In regards to the release of Super Mario Maker, he released a series of tweets talking about some of the basics of level design so that we can make better Mario Maker levels. We're going to explore some of those tweets and just talk about them so that you can make better levels. The first tip that Chris gives is have a core mechanic. And Chris talks about having a core mechanic in the sense that you wanna theme your level around one specific mechanic. You don't wanna throw a bunch of mechanics at people and you don't wanna make it so complicated that players aren't going to know what they're supposed to be doing. We've all been thrown into a game where you're exposed to a bunch of systems all at once. You have essentially let loose in the world and you may have gone through a short tutorial and understand some of the simple movement or combat mechanics, but then all these other systems are tacked on around those systems that you've just learned about and it all becomes very overwhelming very quickly. Well, when you jump into Mario Maker, there are tons and tons of things that you can add to your levels and you wanna resist the temptation to just start dragging and dropping. Theming a level around one core mechanic allows you to go through a process that will teach the mechanic to a player, it will test them on it, maybe you can twist that mechanic or you can change that mechanic later on or add some layers of complexity so that you can really put them through their paces and challenge them, and then they finish the level. Once you have a core mechanic, you can pick other mechanics from the tool set and build around that core mechanic to be able to support the challenges that you wanna put forward, keep the player understanding what it is that they're supposed to do, and not need to teach them several mechanics at once. The second tip that Chris puts forward is build in scenes. Chris talks about scenes as essentially a segment of gameplay that the player will immediately be presented with. In terms of Mario Maker, this translates over to being essentially what you see on screen at once. You wanna make scenes that are easy to consume and that travel well between each other. You wanna avoid things like leaps of faith where you jump off the edge of a platform and hope that there is something to land on or gotchas like flying enemies that pop up out of nowhere that are difficult for the player to perceive before they've initiated their actions. Mario games are really reliant on this kind of stuff because the camera sticks fairly close to Mario's position and doesn't give you much information ahead of you. So when building a level, you need to keep the information that the player needs around Mario at all times or provide them with safety barriers to allow players to experiment without failing just because they were pushing the boundaries of the system. Tip number three is break rules one and two. Now this might seem somewhat counterintuitive, but once you have a really good grasp on creating a core mechanic and creating challenges around that core mechanic, it can be okay to ambiguously end a scene with something like multiple paths or make a scene that may have several little ways of passing through it rather than just a individual unit of challenge. This basically comes down to any sort of art form where once you understand the rules, it's okay to break them as long as you're breaking them consciously and not just doing whatever you want. In this case, we've established that a scene will allow a player to see all the information that they need and having a core mechanic means that they will understand what it is that they should be doing. And so while it's okay to tweak that and break apart from these things, such as branching a path off in two ways and making it ambiguous which way you should go, maybe that thing will lead to two slightly different challenges or two entry points to the next scene, which will change the way that the player progresses through that scene. But by doing that consciously, we're breaking rules one and two, but we're creating a better experience for the player while we're doing it. So we don't have to rigidly stick to these rules as long as when we break them, we're doing it to enhance the player's enjoyment of the level or to construct a more interesting level. The fourth tip that Chris puts forward is good levels teach the players how to play. And at the top of this tip, he mentions the structure Super Mario 3D Land director Koichi Hayashida used in order to construct levels. This is a very simple four step process, as you can see on screen, and involves a safe introduction to a mechanic, 
developing the idea, twisting that idea where you might th make things a little bit more challenging or add in some mechanics that you haven't used in the level before, but maybe the player is familiar with. And then the final exam, which is a fair but challenging gauntlet that encompasses and uses all of the things that the player has learnt throughout the level. Tip number five is think in metrics. Metrics are essentially just ways that you can mathematically consider what you're doing with your levels. In Mario Maker, the entire game is built on a grid, and so we have a very strong, usable, built-in metric that we can do. Certain things are certain widths, most blocks are one grid space wide, and so Mario can jump a certain amount of blocks. He can jump so high in blocks. And so you can use this metric to measure how far you want a block to be away, which may increase or decrease its challenge. And you can use this idea of challenge to create more or less challenging levels or segments and control the pacing of your levels, which leads into tip six, pacing and rewards. It's better to reward the player for taking a risk than it is for punishing the player. And players love rewards. Giving players coins, power-ups, items will push them in certain directions. Coins are something that you are supposed to collect, and so putting them in a certain place will push a player towards that area. Maybe they can be used as a wayfinding object. Maybe they can be used to tell the player where they should be moving to get to the next scene. Don't just litter your level with coins and items and things. Structure out the way that you are going to be placing them in front of the player and use them as a tool to help you in your level and push the players in the direction that you want to go. This can be very helpful for the other part of step six, the pacing. It's not a good idea to just throw challenge after challenge after challenge at players. And that's because people will burn out after a while. So you want to add moments of reprieve, things like checkpoints, things like safe platforms, things like areas where you can just stop and rest. Maybe it's a platform that moves back and forth, but it doesn't fall down or break or whatever. And then to contrast that, you wanna have areas of challenge. So you have a small challenge and then a big challenge, and then you have a moment of rest. And then you have a big challenge and then a small challenge and then a big challenge, and then you have a moment of rest. Give the players some reprieve. It's not nice to just be smashing players constantly. This ties back into things like items. Maybe you put an item off the main path of the player so that they have to stop if they want it and get the item from maybe it's a couple of platforms up or something like that and then they can continue on their way but they've taken a moment to stop the high stakes jumping between all these crazy platforms to just get that extra life or get that power up and that will reset and just chill out the moment for a second and it's a good way to do it so you can use your items to help with your pacing as well tip seven is make players curious we have a 2D camera in Mario Maker 2, and we should use it to our advantage to show players different parts of the levels that they may be interested in or want to explore to later. It's important to have a critical path that runs through your level. Don't make it a crazy winding maze unless that's something that you're consciously trying to do, but show them little offshoots, show them little secrets, make them curious, make them want to explore your level. You can do this in a bunch of ways, but one really good way is put something that the player wants in the camera view and then put a wall of some sort of block in between the player and that thing, which will hopefully make them interested, curious because they want that thing and they will chase down a way to try and find it. Not everyone is going to do this, but you've given them a taste of what they could have. So with a bit of luck, they might engage with the little breadcrumbs that you laid out for them. Tip number eight is use items to assist and create tension. The first point is assisting. We can put coins in places that points the player towards something that we want them to do, or hint at where they should be going in order to get into the next scene. This is something that you would have seen in Mario a million times. There's a line of coins that shows you where you should be going. There's coins that show you that you shouldn't be jumping off a platform yet. There's coins that show that the path splits up. Conversely to this, we can also use coins and other items to tempt the player to make decisions that they might not normally make. There is a concept called the path of least resistance, and this refers to a player will do as little as possible and take as little risk as possible to get to the end, unless you make them take risks by giving them some reason to do it. Coins are a really good example of this. A great demonstration of this is the screenshot that's on screen from Chris's tweets. In this section, we've put two coins just off to the right. Now, normally a player would just sit on that platform and write it down, but in this case, players are able to take a risk of jumping for those two coins on the right to get two extra coins. And then a bit further down, it's something similar. 
where there's four coins off to the right and you'll need to time your jump as this platform moves along this track in order to maximize your run, but that also means taking more risk. Number nine is playtest, playtest, playtest. This is something that is super, super, super prevalent in actual game design. You need people to play your level. In general, people will make levels that are too hard because when they're making these levels, they're super familiar with the mechanics. But then when you give that level to somebody else, they don't understand the reasoning and logic behind why you've set up the level like that. They may miss cues that weren't put in or they may miss cues that you thought were obvious that aren't. And so you need to have other people play your level. Now, luckily Mario Maker 2 has an awesome code sharing option in this. So give it to your friends, let them play it, see what they think. But it's super, super important to do this. Otherwise your levels are going to feel weird. They might be paced wrong or people just won't be able to complete them. And finally, number 10 is not everything you make has to be perfect. And this is just a final point that basically says it's better to jump in and take a crack and put something together and share it and it not be liked or it not be super successful. But jumping in and fiddling with it and mucking around is going to allow you to learn. And it's better to do that than it is to be amazingly successful at everything that you do or have one go and then quit because it isn't the most popular level on Mario Maker 2. And the levels that you make 10 in are going to be way better than the first level that you make. And the level that you make 100 in is going to be much, much better than the levels that you made 10 in. Now, Chris's tweets are a really good visual reading version of this information. And Mark Brown, that does the Game Makers Toolkit series has an awesome video version of these tips. He covers a lot of the same ground, but there are some unique things in there as well. So if you haven't seen the Game Makers Toolkit video on Mario Maker 2, definitely go over and watch that. Mark also has another video on the four step level process that we spoke about a bit before. I'll link the tweets and Mark's videos in the description so that you can go and find them yourself. Go over and give Chris some love. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. I'll see you in the next one.